Hey everyone, this is Eric Salo. I um, just finished setting up a machine with Linux CNC, and it took me a long time. Right, it was it was relatively difficult. I, I took an old VMC from the mid 1980s and took all the electronics out and rebuilt it with modern stuff in Linux CNC. And the whole thing it was a pretty rewarding project, right? I'm super happy with the result. But it was really hard uh, for me to figure out how to use Linux CNC. And you know, I'm a computer guy. I work for a computer company. I've been building computers for, for decades now. And I'm not a programmer, certainly not a Linux programmer, but just the basic context of how to use the system was really elusive. So I thought I'd put together a couple of short videos just to talk about what I learned and, and how to do it. Uh, actually, at the end of the day, it's not that bad. Uh, but man, getting there was really difficult. So. Just a couple of things to cover in this video. You know, the, the first thing is it just seems impossible if you're not a programmer, right? There's it's Linux, which is weird, uh, certainly compared to Windows or a Mac OS, and and you know, there's just no context, right? There was no there's no real easy way to figure out how to do this stuff. And and once you get it, man, like looking back, it was like that was easy. I can't believe I spent two weeks trying to figure that thing out. It was so it was so simple at the end of the day. And you know, really, it is simple once you know what to do. And that's the trick is there's context, right? So it's it's like, you know, there are some things that are just, you know, once you've done them, you're like, oh my gosh, that was just the most clear, easy to do thing, but I didn't have any idea how to get there. And I had to kind of grunt it out. And so hopefully I can save some of you guys a little bit of time to do it. So there's a couple of simple rules or three things I'd like to kind of talk about. And the first one is like, where the heck are all the modifications? Like, you know, you've got Linux, which is, like I said, hard to figure out if you've not used it before. And then you install the software, this Linux CNC software, and there's all these things. There's HAL files and any files and, and NGC files. And like, how does it all work, right? So I want to just give a sort of a little bit of a guide to that. And then also, I couldn't figure out like where the examples were. You know, I, there's a good forum uh, on Linux CNC, but as far as just like how do I do this, there wasn't a lot of that. And then I realized that all these built-in examples are really what you're what you're supposed to look at or are really helpful. So those are a couple of the couple of the, the lessons that I'd like to just talk about in this in this discussion when you first boot up the the Wheezy image. And it's actually all here for you. So you go to the Applications menu, and you go here to the CNC, and you go to the Linux CNC config picker, right? And there are these these wizards that are designed to help you set it up automatically for your hardware. But I'm actually going to show you what those do because I think it's really interesting. So I'm going to select the CNC config picker here. And it's going to ask me what I want to load. And, you know, here's the first trick is that all the examples are right here, right? They're, they're built in right here. There's, um, there's an interface called Axis, uh, which, is kind of, which is kind of neat. That's actually where I started. And there's another one, um, I think it's pronounced GMO copy, or at least that's how I'll pronounce it. That's the one I ended up using because it's so good for touch screens. Uh, there's also Touchy, which is good for touch screens. And there's all these different configs. Like, so for Axis, and like I said, this is where I started, they tell you how to use it for uh, nine axes. Uh, you know, that's, that's kind of a corner case, I would guess. Um, you know, if you wanted to use a lathe, if you wanted to use classic ladder, that's a way to talk to hardware. Um, I have a, uh, I have a, a pendant, right? So there's this, there's a, there's a, um, the XHC, you know, it's kind of the Chinese eBay pendant. Um, they, there's an example there. Uh, I've got a tool changer. I looked at the, the VizMatch uh, tool changer to help me to understand how to do that. So the examples are really in here, and let me show you how to use them. I guess that's what I really didn't understand. So let's just start with the basic Axis um, user interface. So I'm going to tell it OK, and it's going to make a directory with all the config files. And the config files, and you know, this sounds so simple now that I know it, but the config files are where all the configs are. And, you know, like I said, Linux is weird, and there's a lot of things going on with, you know, with um, with Linux DNC. It turns out that all the things you need to do this are in this config file. So let me make this smaller, let me just show you. So if you go to home here, there's Linux CNC folder. And in there, there's configs, All right? So let's go there. And we just made this one. We just made sim.axis. And if you go here, and let's view these as a list. These files are, are literally, literally everything you need to make the system work, right? And that's the first thing that's really interesting. And remember a minute ago when we saw the different axes, the nine axis and the, you know, um, uh, millimeter version, these are all different 
different initializations, right? The one we're running right now is axis.ini. So let's open it up and look at it. And this is the first this is the first thing. So right here, if you look at axis, this is like the, the basic setup of the machine. And I'll go over these in a second, but I just want to point something out. So if we go to the way the way it works is these the areas where the hashes are, the pound signs, these are uh, comments. And then there are these sections that are defined by the square brackets, right? So here's the EMC section, tells you what revision, what you want to call the machine. And then there's a display section. So let's look at that. So the display, the first the first thing is the first thing on the display section is that we're using Axis, right? And so that's what defines using Axis. Now, let's do an example of another one. So let me make this smaller. And I'm gonna I'm gonna close this Axis um, window. And then I'm gonna go back to that Linux config picker. And I'm gonna cho choose the GMO copy, right? So where is that sample configurations? Sim, GMO copy, and again, you'll see that there are a number of them, and all their any files will actually end up in our in our directory. But let's just do the standard one here. So tell it okay. It's going to make a make the file, and the, like I said, this is the gold, right? The way to understand what's going on is to look at those config files. So here it's going to start up, and you can see it's a great little interface for touch screens, nice big buttons and stuff like that. Let me close that. So now when we go back to home. And Linux CNC configs, there's two, right? There's a sim axis and a sim GMO CAPI. Sim stands for the simulator. So let's look at the sim GMO CAPI. Um, and it looks like we're going to look at just the basic any file. And so if we look at this, you can see there's the same thing, right? It tells you there's an EMC section, there's a display section. And the display section says, hey, the display we're using is GMO CAPI. That's how it knows, right? So if I go back to the axis one, let me make this a little bit smaller just to kind of share. So you can see that in the axis file, the display is axis, and in the, and in the GMO copy file, the display is GMO copy, right? That's how it knows. And that's essentially how this works, is that you have these text files, and there's only, you know, a few of them that you have to worry about, and they are the thing that defines everything. So when you add a pendant, when you add things that you want to talk to your hardware, when you um, want to make a, a modification to one of the the one of the infrastructures like 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 Axis or GMO Cappy, you do it in these config files. It's just as simple as that. And I mean, if somebody would have explained that to me in the beginning, and I feel so kind of dumb for not knowing that, right? Because it's really simple at the end of the day. So let's just go down through this config file just a little bit more and, and talk about it. Um, I didn't change most of everything, but there are a couple of things that are kind of interesting, right? So in the display section, for example, there's a in in Axis there's a there's an override uh, slider that you can make the feed go quicker, and so this would define the the amount quicker you're allowed to go as 20% more, so 120%. Tells you the um, the max and default linear velocities for the for the sliders. Um, and let's go down here. This is one I did change uh, the increments, right? So you can um, actually let me go. Let me just open up uh, open up Axis and show you guys what this where this looks like. So here's my sim axis. I'm just going to load it. So when I go here, you can see that the feed override, remember we talked about that was 120%. We'll look at that. It just goes to 120%, right? So it starts out at 100, goes to 120%, and that's defined right. Ah, that's defined right here, right? So let's make it 200%. Let's make it 2.0 and just see what happens, right? So 2.0. Oops. Failing keyboarding 101 here. All right, so I'm going to save that. All right, and we're going to go to Axis. We're going to close Axis. And we're going to open it again. By the way, you can put a little shortcut on your desktop. It makes this easier, but it's not too not too hard here. So there it goes. And now, when we look at Axis, we can go to 200%. Just as simple as that, right? That's all you had to do. So another thing that I found that was kind of neat to change was, or I didn't like how it was in the initial setup, are, are these increments, right? So they have 1 inch, 0.1 inch, 10 mil, 1 mil, 1 millimeter, et cetera. I thought one inch, for example, that was too much. I was scared to move my, my mill accidentally one inch. So here, when I turn the machine on, you can see that the, the here are all the options that I'm allowed to do it, right? So 
let's say that I don't want any millimeter ones and I don't want an inch, right? So just like before here, we'll close it first this time. So close it. I'm going to get rid of one inch. And I'm going to get rid of the other ones that I don't like. All right, so now I've got just, you know, 100 mils, 10 mils, and 1 mil, right? So I'll save this. Let's go back to my CNC. Pick axis. And when I turn the machine on, that that's all there is, right? So all the things that are defined here are 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 configurable in these initialization files. And this is something, like I said, it took me forever to figure this out. Um, it's really simple, right? And yet impossible if you don't know. So let's talk about a couple other things and I'll end this video and come back. Um, there's this interesting section here, the RS-274 NGC section. And that's the, um, I guess it's a standard that the, that the M codes and G codes fit into. If you want to do something special, like I had a tool changer, which was a lot of work, actually it's more work, than the whole rest of the milling machine project. I also have a two-speed spindle and a couple other things. You'll want to do what's called remap your commands, right? So, you know, the command to change a tool is M6. And, um, and so I actually made up my own program. I'll show you in another video how I did that with M6. And this is the area where you tell it to, to, to go do. And the reason I, the way I learned that is I looked at one of the other, um, one of the example files and they did that, right? So we'll, we'll do that in, like I said, in a subsequent video. Uh, another another place I want to talk about are the trajectory planner sections. So the kind of the basic setup trage here is tells you how many axes, and you can have like, you know, we saw an example earlier where there was nine, uh, maybe three or four or five are more common. Uh, coordinates are X, Y, and Z. This is inches. Um, you know, this kind of gives you the basic setup of the machine. And then for three axes, there's there are these setups that have the, the, uh, the PID, the proportional integral derivative um, numbers. And so these are the setups for your servo controllers, essentially. And you can you can see it right here. So there's the there's F error, there's home offset, um, things like that. So you set the you set these up and there's a there's a little tool to set them up with. But you put these in here and you can actually define your your um, define your servos through this thing. And that's it. It just happens in these files. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop at this video there, and the next one, I want to talk a little bit about some of the modifications that I made. But, you know, the two, two things to learn are, um, number one, the examples are, are in these example files, and when you load an example configuration, you get this very helpful directory full of all of the things that they had to do to, to make, to make the, the machine do the thing that they wanted to do, right, jog wheel, pendant tool sensor, all that sort of thing. So there's a, there are a lot of examples, and they're really easy to get to. It's just that they were, for whatever reason for me, it was hard to figure out. That's number one. Number two is that all of the things you need to do to configure Linux CNC happen in these little text files. And that's the other, that's the other key. And once you figure that out, it's pretty easy. I'm going to end the video there. I hope this was helpful, and uh, I hope you have a great day.